Okay, welcome back from the break. We are uh, uh, in the process of constructing the rational numbers as a route to constructing the reals, but also I want to show you what are some of the issues involved in construction uh, of objects. So for instance, uh, here, um, we're going to begin by uh, using uh, the, the integers. So this notation here, Q, means the rational numbers. And there's some things I'm going to assume, and one of the things I'm going to assume is that we know uh, everything you want to know about the integers. So Z here, these are the integers. These include the positive and negative uh, integers, whole numbers and the negative whole numbers. Okay. Um, we, we're going to assume not only that we have the integers, but um, uh, that they have, we know about their arithmetic, we know that we can um, add them and subtract them and multiply them, and we know about their order. Okay? Okay, so in other words, I don't want to go too far back, okay? I want to assume that you guys know uh, these things, okay? Okay, so when we say the word construction, this often implies that there's some goal. Okay? What's the goal of this construction? What is Q? What do we think of when we think of the rational numbers? Just throw out some thoughts here. I mean, these are things you've, you've learned since grade school, rational numbers. What, 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 do you, what do we think of when we think of rational numbers? Let me hear from someone I haven't heard from before. Tell me your name. David. David. Okay, that's one thing you think of when you think of rationals. Uh, and a terminating decimal uh, uh, has a terminating decimal expansion. What's another thing you think of? Name, please. Uh, Steve. S Steve? Keith. Keith, okay. Uh, they can be written as A over B. Can be written as A over B. Oh, interesting. Okay. Interesting. So, what is Q? There's a question. And a first answer, as Keith suggested, is maybe you write it like this, perhaps. So perhaps, here, let me write this as a thought. Perhaps uh, it's a certain set. What set? Can be written as A over B. And in fact, let me do this in, 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 uh, in using different letters here, more traditional. M over N such that what's true about M and N? Okay, M and N integers, right? Because it wouldn't be a fraction if I put pi and pi over E here, right? Okay, okay, very good. What else is, do, you, do, you, do you normally do with, these, uh, with this notation? Not only demand they be integers, but I claim you demand something else about one of them, yes? Ooh, interesting. That's not something I'm going to demand right away. But uh, what's, a, what's a more important consideration? Second row here. Uh, N cannot equal zero. Good. Tell me your name. David. N cannot equal zero, David said. So M and N are in Z, and N is not zero. Okay? This is one possible answer you might give to this question, but it's not very satisfactory for a few reasons. But probably the most important reason is we have no idea what this notation means. What do you mean by M over N, right? What does that mean? The integers don't have a division defined on them, right? What does it mean? Okay, so, so I'm just gonna say this is not quite good enough because we don't know what we mean by uh, what, what, what the symbol. What's this mean? Okay, so let's uh, try to be a little more careful and we can be guided by what we do know. Um, so let's think about the motivation. So when we think about fractions, you know, we're usually thinking about trying to teach children uh, something about dividing, I don't know, cakes into pieces or 
something like that, right? So, you know, you might, for instance, take a, a cake, which looks remarkably like an interval, um, <laughs> and dividing it into, oh, I don't know, three pieces, and giving somebody one of those three pieces. Okay, and we have a name for this fraction. We call it one third, right? Okay, one third, which really means one part of three, right? That's one way to think about it. But there are other ways that would describe the same quantity, right? I could have divided the cake into six pieces and picked two of those pieces, right? So the one third we normally write one over three, and this uh, in this thing we might say two parts of six, and we could write two over six, and we see already another issue, which is what we have two different fractions, but they represent the same thing, right? Sorry, my microphone is it really is falling. Um, okay, so this brings us to a, a concept here, which is, okay, well, we have two ways of representing the same thing. Two ways of representing the same thing. These two things are, in some sense, we want them to be e e equi equivalent. <laughs> equivalent, okay? So maybe we want to set up a construction uh, that's, where we define fractions in terms of equivalence relations, okay? How are we going to do that? What will the equivalence relation be? So, um, how about this? Let's take any construction, like any uh, picture like this, and if I want the associated fraction, I will think of one over three as an ordered pair. So maybe I'll do the following. In the first picture, I'm picking one part out of three. And in the second picture, I'm picking two parts out of six. And I will think of these as equivalent ordered pairs. Okay, and to make this a sentence, I might say write that as equivalent ordered pairs, period. All right? Okay. And then what I will do, if I can, is once I figure out what all the things that are in the, it, that are equivalent uh, are, the idea is that these belong to some equivalence class. that might have lots of other things in it, right? Like 10 comma 30, right? Or 121 comma, why did I torture myself? 363. Yes. Okay. These belong to some equivalence class and we'll give that a name. We'll call that equivalence class one third. Are you with me? Okay. Now, once you have that, then, of course, you can just talk about fractions, right? And then everybody knows how to work with fractions, which are really disguised ways of dealing with the equivalence relation that's embedded here. What's the equivalence relation that everybody learns in grade school? When are two fractions?